Hello, Zuko here. You're here, I'm queer, and welcome back to my channel. We all know that Avatar The Last Airbender has become popular again, and I am so happy about it. I remember watching Avatar when I was in high school and having no one to geek out with, so I'm so happy that there's a resurgence to the series. I love seeing different Asian and indigenous influences in this fantasy world. We don't really see that a lot in Western media. Like it was just filled with so much culture and I love how they interpreted that into the Avatar world. I definitely geeked out when I saw a Korean humbug. I mean, I'm not Korean, but I feel like it's rarely seen, like I said, in Western media. I'm sure by now we all know that Netflix picked it up for a live action series, which I was very, 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 very excited about. I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be such a colorful cast. I was like, they're gonna hire indigenous actors, a lot of Asian actors. I was so, so, so excited for all the color, for all the culture. But apparently due to disagreements in the production, the original creators of Avatar, are Michael Dante DiMartino and Brian Konietzko left the Netflix production because of um, disagreements. And I'm like, um, so yeah, I don't, let's just say all the hopes and all of the dreams um, that I had has gone down the drain, you know? I don't think the casting will be great. I hope I'm wrong, but let's just say it's not going to be as colorful as I thought. Um, the martial arts bending may not be that accurate. I mean, we all know how the movie went. We don't talk about it. The movie that must not be named. To, I definitely want to be proven wrong, so I'm hoping for that. Now let's talk about the Fire Princess herself, my sister, Azula. Of course, I had to come correct. I'm here to present my sister, and you know, I had to get with it. Azula is my favorite character. I'm sure that is no surprise if you've been here for a while. I just love how she doesn't wait for your protagonist to do her transformation, and she will definitely strike when there's an opening. So like imagine if she was in the Sailor Moon world and Sailor Moon's just doing all her transformations, she would have been dead, you know what I mean? Her voice actress being Grey Delisle is such a bonus. You guys know I love every single role that Grey Delisle is in. She's Vicky, she is Jeanne from Bayonetta, she is Jacqueline Natla from Tomb Raider. Oh my god, she is Sam Manson from Danny Phantom, like wow. For my doll, I wanted to keep the silhouette of her arm from season 3 since it was my favorite Azula look. I love the contrast of black, red, and also gold. The Fire Nation as a country is usually associated with Japan and the Polynesian Islands because of how it's laid out, but the royal and military attires are actually often inspired by Chinese clothing. I'm sure they were stylized and simplified so it's easier to animate, but the core elements are there. I wanted this look to be kind of like her armor in the palace look. That's why it's a little bit more grand. It's a little bit more extra. This is like what she wears to the war room, to like when she, there's a meeting or something, when she's in the throne room or something. Like I want this to be more grand, so it's not really that fighting efficient, you know? She definitely can't be as agile and nimble with all of this going on. <laughs> I mean, we all know what happens when you wear a cape to battle. Miss Edna Mode will not be pleased with this, um, but you know, I love capes. So we're gonna keep it. <laughs> I decorated her armor with dragons because they were the first non-human firebenders and engulfed it in flames. But I do think she looks really, really good, powerful, and of course, sadistic, so it's perfect for Azula. With that being said, let's go ahead and get started. For our lovely Azula, I will be using this purple top made to move Barbie, for I am such a big fan of their possibility. I do want to try and make her waist smaller since I know that all the costumes and armory will make the area bulky. So let's go ahead and carefully remove her arms and legs. Thank you. 
I'm gonna try the boiling technique again, and I hope it is successful this time. I saw this two years ago from Babs Fangirl on Instagram, and they referenced Melanin Barbie underscore ish for this legendary technique. I've tried this before and I've definitely ruined two dolls, so be very careful if you guys want to try it. This will require lots of strong rubber bands, and I will use a felt fabric to protect the skin. Now let's go ahead and wrap her up with our rubber bands, and you can really use as many as you want. Just make sure your rubber bands are strong enough so that it doesn't snap in hot water. Then we have to boil the water, and yes, it has to be boiling hot. And after a minute or two, I take my joint pliers and I carefully squish her stomach. It's definitely hard to tell whether the plastic is moving, so I had to remove the rubber bands in order to check. You can definitely use your hands to manually push the plastic, but this is more dangerous since you're dealing with a very hot object. After it's dried and cooled down, we can remove the rubber bands. And voila! I was actually very very happy that it was successful this time. It's definitely not symmetrical though, but it's not too shabby. She's gonna be fully covered anyways, so I'm sure I'll be fine. Now let's work on her armor. I'm gonna tape up her body since we will be working with a heated warbler and that can stick to the doll's plastic. Using a piece of paper, I'm trying to gauge how her pauldron would look. And when the shape is achieved, I can then trace that onto our warbler. Let's go ahead and cut that and we should have something like this. Then I take my heat gun to soften the warbler so we can reshape it. Just a reminder to be very careful when you're working with hot warbler, it can definitely burn you. And during this time I was heating it up also while I was re-molding it because um, it can really cool down fast and you want to be able to keep working with it and reshape it. So yeah. After that, we can add the spoulders connected below the pauldron. I just drew this triangle with a curved base and it should actually look like a half circle when put together. I heated it up and molded it onto her shoulders, then I will directly glue it on the pauldron. Then let's take a rectangle piece and make the collar piece. By the way, these can all be melded together just by heating them up and pushing them together, but I wanted extra security so I used super glue as well. And that's that for the base. Now let's add the dragons. If you have seen my Mulan video, then you've seen these dragons. They're here again with all their fiery goodness, and I got them from Michaels. I just removed their heads since that's all we need, and I'll save the bodies for future projects. Taking epoxy sculpt, I fill the inside of the spolder, and we can then hot glue the dragon heads to it. Make sure the hot glue doesn't reshape the warbler though. Then let's cover the whole thing with a thin slab of epoxy so we can marry the dragon head to the armor. I try to imitate the dragon's hair and I try to blend them together as much as possible. Then of course we just do the same thing to the back and also to the other side. Then let's sculpt the armor's trim. And we should have something like this. I got these warbler pieces to act as a guide for her shoulder spikes, and if you've followed me for a while, you know 
We love being dramatic in this channel, so I definitely exaggerated these spikes. I'm just drawing the Fire Nation symbol to gauge how thick I want the trims to be. Then let's fill the front trims with epoxy. I wanted this to be boxy and not rounded. I feel like that gives it more of a rigid look. And I apply it to the collar as well. I definitely want Azula's outfit to be sharper than Chan's. You know, sharp enough to puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea. Because it's so sharp. <laughs> I will use foam clay for the back trims to keep its flexibility. The back needs to be able to bend so we can slide her neck in between. I had to super glue it in place while sculpting it because she was not gripping to the warbler. Then let's sculpt the Fire Nation insignia. Since it also needs to be flexible with her armor, I first sculpt it with epoxy, then I make a mold out of it. After a few minutes, the mold should be ready to go, and we can use the foam clay again to make the perfect replica. You also kind of want to wait at least a day or two um, for the foam clay to dry because, surprisingly, they don't dry that fast. The armor will need to bend like this to slide through her neck, so anything from the trims and the insignia will need to be somewhat flexible. I even changed the neck trims to foam as well. Then let's add some contemporary flames in front of her armor, and I'm using epoxy for these. Moving on to the breastplate, let's trace this to our warbler and cut accordingly. Of course, let's go ahead and heat it up to activate the warbler and shape it to the doll's chest. I then draw the trim and the flame design that halos another Fire Nation symbol. Let's take another thin slab of epoxy and make it as even as possible. Let's go ahead and sculpt those flames. I really loved this part of the process. It was oddly satisfying. Maybe because you don't really have to create a particular shape. It's not really uniform. And you could just go crazy with the flames. Then, let's frame it with a breastplate's trim. And now we're done with the breastplate. Let's go ahead and move on to the gauntlets. This shape mirrors Azula's gauntlets as well, and I just wanted to add more pizzazz and details to it. Again, let's heat her up and shape it directly to her arms. Then, let's apply the clay again. I'm sure you've noticed, but the process for her armor pieces are mostly the same. The only thing really different is how I designed the flames. Azula is a firebender prodigy, and I wanted her armor to reflect that. It really is like she is engulfed in flames, kind of like the Fire Lord's throne.
And that's that for her gauntlet. Last but not the least, let's work on her greaves. Again, this will have the same process with slight variation. The flames are divided in half and there is a protective trim in the middle. For how I drew my flame designs, I was definitely referencing Avatar Roku's statue. He had a bunch of flame halos behind him and I thought it was so so beautiful. Then, I'm creating another variation of her crown as her knee guards. Her original knee guards were fairly simple, but like I said, I loved drama. And really, anything sharp. I'm heating it up so we can bend it in the middle. This gives it more dimension, and then I just super glue that on top of her greaves. We are now finished making her armor, well, sculpting and warbling of it all anyway, let's break away and move on to her head for now. So since this was the Asian purple top made to move Barbie, I thought the default head was perfect, like I even rebooted her and everything, until I looked through more Asian dolls. I bought this tall fashionista and I was like, okay, I love her, she has strong cheekbones and head shape, but then she was kind of smiling a little bit too much. Then I saw the new BMR collection and the tall Asian there was so cute. Cute. She was such a good mixture of the first and second head, so I decided that she was perfect. One thing that annoyed the monkey feathers out of me was she has those BTS pixelated face-ups. I remember everyone hating customizing the BTS dolls because their faces were so difficult to remove. And yes, I was right. This was a to remove and I was very much livid. As usual, I take my acetone to wipe her face up clean. My acetone is 100% so I thought I would get lucky, but no, you definitely need some elbow grease for this. Just to show, here is me lightly tapping onto the other fashionista's eyebrow and look how easy it is to remove. Like, wow, it's so satisfying. But this thing really requires you to almost dig at her face up and I'm certain I damaged the mold slightly. later. Now that she's clean off of her factory paint, here is a quick comparison of the made to move Asian head to the new Asian BMR head. She definitely has a longer face, a wider nose bridge, and fuller lips. They're both gorgeous though. Now let's go ahead and remove the doll's hair. I tested the armor with her head and I noticed that she can barely rotate and that's a gnar for me. I'm gonna try and extend her neck so wish me luck. First I slice her neck off obviously and I drill a hole inside so the epoxy has something to hold on to. Then I apply the epoxy on the base and place the neck back on. I try to blend them together as much as I can, so sanding will be easier. After it sets, this is the result. She can now freely move her head around! Yay! Now let's go ahead and try and blend the neck with the body with paint. Make sure to do this in thin and watery layers. For her hair, I will use this black acrylic yarn. Her original hair is actually dark brown, but I love the contrast of jet black hair. I just take my rerouting tool and reroot away. Make sure to space two holes in between since yarn is pretty thick. Thank you. 
After that, this head gave me another headache.、Um, it fully opened up in the front, and again, I was livid.、Um, this happens when the doll's head isn't as flexible, or as rubbery, or as soft.、Um, this happened to my Cruella Silkstone doll as well. I mean, even if it's a look, it's a Halloween look. So let's try and fix this. I was low-key ready to just use the first head I rebooted. Not gonna lie. I'm using the JB Weld Plastic Bonder. This is an industrial grade, and it said it can meld rubber. I just mix both parts together and I apply it generously to the seams. It said that it would be wise to wait at least a day, and that I did. And it actually worked. I was really surprised. Hallelujah. I punctured in the holes I was going to reboot to prevent my needle from breaking. And the reroot is a success. Oh my bathala! I just realized I rerooted three times for this project. Oh my god! To secure the yarn plugs, use Fabri-Tac glue, and again wait at least a day. We can then unravel the yarn, and I'll be using a plastic and metal pet brushes. I actually thought of giving Azula ponytails because she rocks it when she's just at home and chilling, but I thought that the top knot fits her character a little bit more. After everything's unraveled, let's take our straightener to straighten her hair. And then we are done with her reroute. I put her in a ponytail so it's easier to wrap her up. Of course, before we start the face up, I primed her face at least three times with Mr. Super Clear. Then let's take our Derwent watercolor pencils to sketch out Azula's visage. Like always, you want your first layer to be the trial and error layer. Like this is the stage where I used my eraser the most. In this case, I redid her face like three times. <laughs> Of course, we have to give her the golden royal eyes. I'm taping her eyes to create a strong eyeshadow line, and I'm taking my chalk pastels to give her eyeshadow. I want her eyeshadow to reflect the Tang Dynasty makeup, specifically the ones depicted in *The Empress of China*, with Fan Bingbing as the Empress Wu Zixin. And here's one satisfying peel. Now let's match her brows to her jet black hair. Let's also show a little bit of her teeth. And now it's time to sharpen those eyes with some fierce liner. Of course, I want to give her Azula's beauty. People have made comparisons of Azula and Ursa, her mom, and they really do look like carbon copies. It's so crazy. I remember being so captivated by Ursa. I was like, "Oh my god, she's so freaking beautiful!" Like, what the heck? I want to look like that. I darkened the shadow to make it a little bit more contemporary, and I feel like it matches Azula's character so much more. Now I cover her lips with Oxblood acrylic paint. And I also whiten her scleras with white paint. Now let's add some bottom lashes to balance the eyes. I kept this dark brown so it doesn't compete with the shadow and the eyeliner. Her top lashes are also going to be drawn, and I thought this would result better than using 3D lashes. Now let's go ahead and give her some gilded highlighter. I am using gold perlex powder to give her lips more dimension. I apply artificial shadow with pastels to the sides and the bottom of her top lip. Now let's go ahead and give her some menacing catch lights with paint. 
And now we're done with Azula's face-up. I think I was able to transform the sweet doll into a fierce fire princess, ready to take down anyone in her way, because don't flatter yourself, you were never even a player. Now let's work on her hair. She wears a top knot with two short side fringe, and I want to make her top knot a little longer than the original just to balance her face. I then trimmed her fringes and I wrapped a soft rubber band to keep the fringe in place. Now let's work on her actual costume. I got this from the lovely Deluxe Designs, of course, and it is absolutely perfect. But then I found this beautiful red fabric from a local Las Vegas fabric store. It's a deeper red and it has a shift of black in some angles. And I love the subtle horizontal texture. I was so captivated that I had to try and make her a new costume. Yes, yes, that happened. I definitely tried my best for this one since I wanted her to be able to move around with it so everything is hemmed. And I think we have another success on this one. I made her sleeves a little bit longer and I made the pants more tapered. Now let's go ahead and work on her Ming Dynasty inspired placard and tacit. I just used a thicker pleather fabric for this one. I kept the original shape of her tassets, but I blended it with her placard. In the original, she was wearing a black shirt under her breastplate, but I wanted this to be a solid piece. I drew and cut out this shape that looks like a dagger, and I draw the back tassets. Then I just super glue them together. Then let's cut out the trim from the same fabric. Again, let's just adhere that with super glue. After that, we should have something like this. I also sewed snaps in the back for closure. Then let's give it the Fire Nation stamp of approval. Since the dragons were the first non-human firebenders, I decided to adorn Azula's tacit with a Chinese dragon. I started by sketching the design and priming it with yellow since the gold won't really show completely by itself. Then I layer different gold paints together. Now let's go ahead and sketch the details with black paint. When that's done, let's add some hot glue texture to the rest of her armor. I wanted the dragon to stand out by itself, but I also didn't want to keep the entire thing flat, so hot glue it is. I just tried to imitate ball of flames to the back of her tacit. Then I use matte black paint to unify the textures. To highlight the flames, I dry brush it with vintage gold paint. I take a thick layer of gold and I paint all of the trimming as well. Then I dry brush them with black to age it slightly. I also add gold trims to the back of the tassets since they show from the front. Now let's go ahead and work on her boots. This will go directly under her greaves. I'm using a really thin pleather for this one. Like always, I wrap the fabric with the good side facing in and I sew it directly. I only sew till I reach the ankle part since we need the extra fabric for the shoes. Then I'm taking these Model Muse pumps and I'm gonna go ahead and put it on her. Now we can super glue the excess fabric to her pumps very tightly, just make sure to stretch it out as much as possible. 
After it completely dries, I trim off the excess. Now again, let's go ahead and take our thicker pleather fabric and make a trim out of it. This will go directly in the middle of the boot to blend in with her greaves design. To blend the entire shoe in, I'm going to add some hot glue texture as well. For her toe spikes, I cut a triangle shape and shape it to fit the toe box. I then just super glue that on. Now let's get our armors again and give them some life. Again, I'm gonna prime everything that needs to be gold with yellow to give it a solid base. To those of you who are Avatar fans, who is your favorite character? Like I said, of course, my top one is Azula, but I also loved Yue, Suki, Kyoshi, June, Ursa, Toph, Katara. You know what? All the girls. I wanted to be all of them. They were all written really, really well. They were all very complex, and I just, I just love it. Then I dry brush the gold again with black to age and bring out the details a lot more. Now let's move on to the breastplate. For this one, I started with a black base, then I dry brushed it with the same oxblood color to give it a slight shift. And of course, we're gonna gild it with gold paint. Also, if you guys wanna see more Avatar dolls, you guys should definitely check out Etalan and also Tanila Grams. Their dolls are so freaking cool and I love it. Then we can just repeat the same process for her gauntlets, greaves, and boots. If you guys lived in the Avatar universe, what bender would you be? I'm definitely a firebender, I think. As a Sagittarius, I feel like I'm fiery in a way. And when I get mad, I can definitely explode. So I guess my Zuko cosplay is very fitting in that sense. <laughs> I was actually really really excited about how this armor is turning out and I was like oh my god I would want to wear this in real life like hello when we can go to conventions again I'm definitely gonna have to cosplay as Azula. For the fans, which animal is your favorite hybrid in Avatar? My favorite, I mean aside from Appa and Momo, of course. I loved all of the pig hybrids and all of the duck hybrids. They were so, so freaking cute. Oh my goodness. I know some good red Louboutins would fit Azula very well, but her soles are actually gold, and I love that for her. Now let's go ahead and give her some dramatic cape. I'm taking this ruby colored fabric, and as you can see, I already hemmed her. There's a hem here, there's a hem there, there's a hem everywhere, and I just sew it with a straight stitch to gather it. I secure it to her pauldron and I added four snaps. And we should have something like this. And now we can finally dress up her majesty. So let's go ahead and assemble Azula. Thank you. 
And now her main costume is definitely completed. We can move on to work on her headpieces. I'm actually using the Fire Nation symbol I sculpted as her crown. I was actually kind of obsessed with how I sculpted the Fire Nation insignia. I may want to turn this into an earring or something. Hello? I should. Should I? I should. Then I want to reference the original pilot design with the Japanese-inspired Kabuto helmet, and you can see it has a Maidate design in front that looks like a stag beetle's mandible. Now let's go ahead and adorn her hair. I use a gold hair cuff for her top knot, and I just poke in the others in her head. Then I wanted to reference her mom's beautiful sleeve trims with these ribbons. Every time I saw Ursa, I was looking at her sleeves. I just loved how it was like golden, it looked like a feather. I was, I was obsessed with it. I then just add some flowers for additional decoration. Let's also finish up her pauldron with some chains and flowers. Now for her hands, I want to give her two pairs of hands. One pair will be the default and then the other is the lightning hands. So I heat them up one by one with my heat gun and I cut the fingers that I need to pose. Then I submerge them in ice water to set them. So the hands without the polish will be the ones posed for her lightning bending. I clipped it and super glued the fingers so that they stayed shut. Now let's go ahead and give her some long nails with hot glue. Then we can go ahead and trim off the excess glue. Now let's apply the Red Royal polish that was really popular during the Ming Dynasty. She actually had no polish in the series, only Mei did, but I thought, why not? I didn't add a nail to her left hand pinky because I wanted to give her some Chinese royal nail guards. These were very popular in the Qing Dynasty and this was a sign of power, beauty and wealth. And if you've seen Korra, you know who were rocking these. Now we're done with Azula. Azula speaking. I would like to issue a proclamation, and that proclamation is that all of you need to follow the Hexchin channel on YouTube. And if you can't spell, that's at H-E-X-T-I-A-N. Yes, that's the correct spelling. And if you don't do it right now, 
You'll be banished, and you'll never rise from the ashes of your shame and humiliation. 